Hey everybody, I'm Captain Tommy Scoville and you are on the lifeboat and I am coming to you from the deck of the new and improved and super hopped up uh, version of the lifeboat. We are working with different equipment. Uh, if I could get a 5x5, five five, I would greatly appreciate it. That would uh, set my mind to tease, people. Damien, good to see you. Lori, glad you're here. CK, Wharton Thistle, good to see you. I think I saw my man Nick. Always a pleasure, Nick. CK. Christy. Just watching an interview down the rabbit hole. That was something, wasn't it? We're going to talk about that. Valerie, good to see you. Six by five. So good to see you. Well, it feels good to be seen. I know that I haven't been seen lately. My biopsy was benign. People, the rest of the day is BS. You realize that, don't you? Nothing else. Everything I'm about to talk about is so trivial. Joel Lawson, God bless you, man. How about that? May have an infection in my right lung. Well, that sucks, but it beats the dog crap out of the alternative. And that is, is the most important thing I've heard all day. God bless you, Joel Lawson. And thank God, or whatever you would like to thank. But I am pretty happy about that. That was good stuff. Good stuff. Okay, so thank you. I love this shirt. So uh, over on Down the Rabbit Hole, uh, they are talking about... Um, a. A. Ron is doing an interview, and uh, this is a uh, this is a heavy duty one. And I'll be honest with you, I know these stories. Um, I uh, I sit down and talk to people about things like this. I am not somebody that waits to hear the story from somebody else. Yes, you did win the lottery. God bless you. I don't wait to hear the story from somebody else. When this stuff started to come out. Um, I, it was right around the time that I was really becoming friends with this guy, and it was all over the uh, the net, right? Um, so I went to the source, and uh, I had a very long conversation with Aaron about all of this. And uh, I'm gonna tell you, uh, I'm gonna tell you my takeaways of all of this. And I think that you're probably going to, um, I think you're probably going to agree on most of this stuff. There might be a couple of things we disagree on, believe it or not. <laughs> Snotface says, that was the hardest things to watch. Um, Mary, I am with you right now. Thank you. Um, so let me tell you where I come down on this, okay? Um, oh, men, men can absolutely uh, experience domestic violence, and what happened to him in L.A., if it wasn't a setup, is the worst luck in history. It was a bad decision. I have made them. There's not a guy that um, has lived that kind of life that has not made those decisions, that has not found himself in situations where you just go, what the hell just happened? Um, but they happen to you when you're 18. <laughs> they happen to you when you're 19. Um, A.A. Ron grew up in a cult. And it really is a different experience, people. You know, we think about proms and we think about things. He was, he was going into the Sea Org at 12. Right? Life's over. Normal life. Like we know life, that life's over. And I know right now most of my friends grew up this way. It seems that, uh, that most of the people in my life who I'm close with these days are ex-Scientologists. And this is what they went through. So put on top of that, because everybody on this channel understands what trauma means. Right? And we all know that we do different weird stuff to deal with trauma. Right? We, we do really weird stuff to deal with trauma. I stick needles in my arms, right? That's what I did. Um, some of you eat to unbelievable extremes. Some of you starve yourself. Some of you literally injure yourself for the endorphin rush to deal with what the day-to-day -day life takes to deal with, right? So if in the midst of his marriage disintegrating and his family being yanked out from underneath him, and uh, let's not forget that he lost his brother, um, in the midst of all of this, if, uh, if his coping mechanism, um, while his marriage was also um, falling apart, was that he went out and did a little bit more drinking, um, I don't know that anybody here is going to toss a, uh, a stone for that, right? Now, I'm going to keep it real. This is um, currently one of my best friends. I care very, very deeply about um, a. a. Ron. And he and I have been uh, speaking behind the scenes when all of this was going on. He's been very, very cool to take my calls whenever I call him uh, just to, to try to, uh, to rap with him and see what, where his mindset is. And his mindset's been in a great place. I got one beef with this entire situation on his side, right? Well, I have two. He makes some bad decisions. 
He makes some bad decisions. But he's a, uh, he's a grown man that didn't get a chance to make really bad decisions when most of us do, right? I mean, that's just a fact. Um, but now he's a, he's a grown man. And one of the, the, the takeaways from this interview was when he was in L.A., and he told me this, when he was in L.A., all of the stupid stuff he had done along the way, getting 86th out of a bar, the, the scene that he, uh, that he got where the, the police showed up after the guy punched him, all of these things, right? Bad decisions. Bad decisions. And they sure could reflect back on anything that's trying to do good in life, right? The, 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 the Aftermath Foundation sure as hell could reflect badly on them. He'd be an idiot not to see that, right? I and mean, we all see that? Okay. The first time that he saw it was in L.A., I love him. I really do. However, if you hadn't grown up in a cult, um, these, these things would have happened to you. Like the kind of crazy stories he's got, I got 50 of them. But I don't have one of them that took place after the age of 30, right? Because I got, you know, that all of that stuff, it's like you get old and you get prejudice. Now, someone will take that one out of context. But I'm talking about prejudice of situation, not of people or race or anything else. But you've done stuff, right? So you meet the wildly attractive girl who's just really, really enthusiastic, right? And younger than you and you just go, you know what? No, right? Why, why does this 38-year-old girl want to go out uh, with a 53-year-old dude, right? <laughs> like, oh, this, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm a bald convict. I would have, I would have gone, uh, this doesn't smell right. Right, I would have been looking for what happened then, but I'm that guy, right? I mean, I am that guy. I am a criminal. He isn't, right? And I, I am. I have lived that life. My biggest problem with this entire situation is not the fact that he made bad judgments, because bad judgments happen, and I promise you, he's going to learn from it. Right? He's absolutely going to learn from it. Being brainwashed, no matter how it happens, screws up anyone. I'm living proof. Holding judgment on people doesn't help them at all. It doesn't. Being assholes to people just makes them bigger assholes. I agree with that 100%. Um, no, he did not beat up a uh, hooker in LA. It's not, first of all, a girl wasn't a prostitute. It wasn't even in the ballpark, man. Uh, you know, I'll give you, uh, I'll give you the, a pass on that one. Um, the next one, I'll just assume that you're not, you're a troll. Uh, and beat up a hooker. There was nothing along those lines. Um, and in all honesty, what the cat did was defend himself. And if you haven't been there, trust and believe, brother, I have, right? Um, and I've also said some really stupid things, right? I really have made some stupid things that have rolled out of my mouth. However, Bunny Boiler, whew, thank you. Absolutely. Absolutely. Took a, took a girl to court for stalking me. There have been some insane things that happen, and, and it's crazy. But these things happen, and they are real. However, I have an issue and, and, I'll, and I'll be the first to tell him this, because I do, I love him. I mean, he's, he is my dog. I'll, I'll go fight for that guy. Literally, much, <laughs> much less figuratively, right? I'll show up, you know? He said he hadn't been in a lot of fights, hasn't thrown a lot. I've been, in, I've been in a few, right? First time I went to LA, I went to LA because I didn't want him to be out in LA. The bunch of people were making threats to him and everything else, and I thought I would just assume him be there with him, right? That's how friends did it where I, uh, where I come from. Right, I appreciate that, Colonel Brock. He didn't. He didn't beat up a hooker. It was just. A, it, it was just. But I will say this: in the course of that other incident, which is not not the one that really is. I don't. That word. That word is is one that he needs to remove from his vocabulary forever. That. Um, that. The, the the guy. The guy did. The, the, you know. Look. No matter how it went down in that bar, that word needs to be removed from his vocabulary. And I love them, but I don't give anybody a pass if I think that they did that. I can't, I can't, uh, that, that word's not kosher in my book, right? I really struggle with that. But everybody makes dumbass decisions. And if you think I would lose a friend over a word that he said, I, I absolutely would not have a friend that I didn't say to him, hey man, that's, that's a word you need to remove from your vocabulary, bro. And, I, and, you know, and, and tell you why. Exactly. He was going through some really heavy stuff in his life. There's no two ways about it. But that's just one of those words that takes an entire human being and brings it down to a very small part of that human being. It's just about as disrespectful as anything that anyone is ever going to say. And it's just one of those words that needs to be removed, at least from this hemisphere's vocabulary. I realize on other parts of the planet that that word gets thrown around like you just wouldn't believe. Like you hear politicians say it, but on this side of the pond, it's... I can't think of anything more foul you could say to a woman, and it's, uh, I take issue with it. But it's just a bad decision. I robbed banks. 
right? Like I made bad decisions and I did them for decades and decades, right? I went and paid my dues. You know what he did tonight? He paid his dues. No, no joke whatsoever, man. Today, A.A. Ron stepped into jail for a little bit. Um, it's difficult to come out and tell the world everything about you. I had no choice, right? How are you going to start a YouTube channel and leave everything about what you are in the, in the past if you're doing what I'm doing? You know, as, as he says, look, you know what? Um, he wants, uh, it's great if, if you can't be, uh, if, if they can't come after you. Like if you're impervious to that, if you don't care that someone wants to say something, um, you know, about you, that's fantastic. It's great to be bulletproof. It really is. And for me, I mean, look, Debbie, I, I'm glad you slapped somebody for calling you that word. I'll be honest with you. I used that word once in my life. For real. I used that word once. I remember like it was yesterday and I got slapped. But I was really young. I was a little boy and I got slapped really, really hard. And the person that slapped me took about 15 minutes to explain to me why I should not ever use that word again. And she did a great job. She did a really, really good job. And that's a word that he just, he's better than that. And I think that's really what it comes down to. He was drunk and he messed up, no question. But uh, I've been accused of saying, there's nothing that this guy could do that you wouldn't call him on. I'm not that dude, right? I'm not that dude. You're right, Jess. He, he will be out of prison tonight. But what he's doing right now to put your past out there, I promise you, I've done this. I have given you guys like all the dirt from my, from my past. I've been doing this now for a long time. And it, it takes something out of you to... Come forward and say, you know what? Here it is, man. Now go ahead. You dig through it and come back and make your videos and, you know, call me what you're going to call me. I mean, if I, I get, we're none of us are saints. There's no question. There's no question. But you know, like, even, even when I get into, I got into a debate with a guy the other day and it was about AA Ron and about everything that was going on. And the guy was absolutely 100% a Scientologist. And if he wasn't, he certainly really liked um, their, their positions. But we were having a, a fairly legitimate deal back and forth. No, Aaron is doing an interview where he is talking about his past. And I was using the analogy of what he was doing tonight was like doing time. Because to sit in front of a camera and tell people about things that you did if you say, let me tell you about the skeletons in my closet, I'm going to tell you about all of them. That's a really rugged conversation. If you don't think so, give it a try. And it's tough when you got 300 people that are going to see the video, right? When, uh, when 8,500 are going to see it live. No, let me do this again since everybody seems to have missed anything. What I said is this. Aaron is doing an interview on Down the Rabbit Hole. And I said, um, to me, this is him doing time. This is him paying for what happened in LA, what happened in, in, uh, in Florida in two different bars. This is not easy to talk about. And uh, especially when you throw in the family dynamic, please keep in mind people that when you leave this stinking religion, they tell the grandparents, right? You're, you're literally going to be picking and choosing. So A.A. Ron and his wife are not gonna be cool with the church, but the other cousins are gonna be. So how it was all, this is gonna implode the family and they know it's coming. And if you ever hear A. 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 Ron talk about those, he said that he did what we did. He knew this was coming, right? He knew that the day was coming where they were going to be declared and the decisions we're going to have to make. And they knew, he knew. And as the day got closer, he just kind of pretended that there was nothing to worry about. And that, you know, it's, you're right. It's not a religion. I really apologize. It's not, it's not. You're a hundred percent right. But coming out and doing what he's doing tonight, it is covering his ass. Make no mistake, it is. It's, it's taking away what they can use as weaponry against them. Because you know what? Honestly, who cares? Who cares? Um, you know something, Mary? I, there are people here that aren't believers. Whether you believe in God or whether you don't believe in God, I am a believer. If you're not, I'm cool with that. But the good news is that anybody can take any mess and turn it around. I do believe that it's God that does that. But insert whatever you believe there, okay? But I, nothing good in my life happened until the entire world knew what a dirtbag I was. It's a true story. I never helped anybody. I never treated anybody the way they needed to be treated. I didn't tell the truth. 
I didn't do any of the things that a guy ought to do if he's going to be a stand-up cat until the world knew everything there was to know about me. And it sucked. It was, it was a very, very uncomfortable process. And I, did it in, and I did it in chunks. I mean, if you've ever watched the old videos, man, I couldn't... It, I, if I sat down and tried to do my entire history in one... Uh, in, I'd end up in a, in a psychiatric ward before the, the, uh, the video was over. I got a lot to admit. Aaron can knock this out in the night. Right. I mean, I'm continually, you know, telling stories because there's just so much that I did. Um, people give words too much power. It's not simple. I agree with you. I do agree that people give words way too much power. I do. It's just a word I struggle with. I'm sorry. It's just a word I struggle with. And you know what? There are people who don't care. I know girls who use that word every day. And I just, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm super uncomfortable with that word. And I'm just keeping it real. I mean, you, you know, I'm not going to come out here and say, I support every single thing, right? I, I see nothing wrong with all that. I'm just keeping it real, people. I'm telling you how I feel, right? Um, I, I, I understand where you're coming from. Your point of view is it's a word, and I agree with you. It's just a word I struggle with really, really hard, right? It's a word I struggle with really, really hard. And I didn't spend a, uh, a career being the nicest dude in the entire world to, uh, to the female race. I spent the first um, 46 years of my life as, a, as a, a guy that was a philanderer and just a guy that ran around and, and was not a very good person. So um, I, I hold myself accountable and I really try to do what I can to be maybe a little bit more of a gentleman when it comes to, um, to that. And I know that there are people who say that it's old fashioned and everything else. I, I drop F-bombs like there's no tomorrow when, when in the wrong situation, it's embarrassing and I'm working on it. I really am because I hate it. I'm not a fan of cursing. It just, to me, it shows that I'm not controlling myself. For me, it's a canary in the coal mine that I'm not controlling myself because it's the first line of defense. If I'm dropping F-bombs, I'm not doing a good job of thinking. Personally, I'm not saying that about anybody else, right? Um, but I don't much care. But the, um, yeah, I, I know a lot of people who do snot face and I know a lot of people that never, ever care. I just, for me, I just don't think it's a word that's appropriate. And, I, and, and I'd be a hypocrite if I came on here today and said, stand behind every single thing the dude said. I don't think he did anything wrong in any position. I think his decision-making processes were horrendous. But I think that that's very natural with uh, where he's come from. And I have more respect for this dude than just about anybody else that I know. I'm not taking anything away from any of that. I just would like to hear him maybe put that word away forever. And um, if you know that you're struggling, if you know that you're going through stuff, you don't have to be an addict to realize that connection is probably a better bet than drinking. And I think he's he's there, right? I think that, um, you know, I'm not, I'm not concerned about the guy. I'll tell you right now, because I get this every day from a hundred of you. I'm not worried about the guy having a problem. I'm really not. You know, we've we've um, spent time together in situations where uh, a guy that's going to really be letting it fly would have been letting it fly. Like we were in L.A. celebrating the fact that Danny Masterson had just been uh, um, convicted and, you know, that we got the 30 year sentence. We were that was a party situation. Right. That was uh, that was definitely a time to let to let your hair down. Uh, and we had a really good time that night. But it was so in control, like it was an adult kind of a party. And uh I don't know. I walked away from there with a, uh, a really fantastic feeling about who the dude was. And I've gotten to spend so much um, more time getting to know him on a personal level. And uh, I'm just, I'm blessed that the dude's in my life. I really am. He's, a, he's an amazing human being. And I want to make you a promise. I sat here for the last uh, week. And in every video I said, what you really need to watch out of this situation is what Aaron does now, right? The big picture in this one, I, pro I promise you, the big picture in this is not, is the Aftermath Foundation gonna be all right? They're gonna be all right. They're a great organization that does good work. They're gonna be all right. Now, are those personalities gonna bounce back the way that they were before? I doubt that. I doubt that, right? They, they alienated their audience. They said a lot of things that were really, really a bummer. And then um, did nothing to, uh, to, to tie a tourniquet around it, right? They did nothing to staunch um, the bleeding. And tonight isn't going to do them any real good because him coming out and taking every single thing they got against him and dumping it out on the table is, is the greatest way in the world to absolutely uh, shut down anybody that wants to talk trash about you. 
if you take away what they can say about you, it, uh, it gets quiet. <laughs> it gets really, really quiet. Uh, I am hoping and there are things coming forward in AA Ron's uh, future and in his uh, w where he's going that are more exciting than the stuff I can't talk about from my life, which is pretty exciting. But we're going to see some things out of AA Ron that are going to make everybody say, I'm guessing this didn't hurt his uh, ability to continue to hurt that fake uh, church. You're going you're gonna to see some things out of my boy. I'm telling you, everything he's done up to this point, there are big things coming from, uh, from A.A. Ron. I'm, I'm so excited about all of the things that he's got in the works that I'm, uh, I'm not even joking with you. It's hard sleeping. Tommy, can you say hello to Mom Sandra? It's her first time listening, and she is enthralled. Well, absolutely. Um, well, we are really happy to have you here, Mom Sandra. It is an honor to have you aboard the lifeboat. Welcome. So, um, one year from now, our AA Ron will be uh, thriving. Um, snot face, I couldn't think poorly of you, hon. You know that. Um, I am of the firm belief that in about three or four months, we're not going to uh, recognize the landscape of SBTV. Ben Turner says, like the video quality. Me too. Pretty fired up about all the new equipment, people. And I'm, and here's the deal. I'm actually figuring out how, um, like I upgraded a bunch of things and uh, it's, it's actually easier to use, which is crazy. Um, let me tell you something. This is a term that I really want people to understand. Um, no, you're not going to get insulted because Laura makes a very legit um, reason to say what she says. And I don't have a problem with what you say. You say it respectfully. So, sorry, I know I'll get insulted, uh, but all of this is to understand the reason the aftermath uh, asked him to leave. Nobody's judging the heart of Aaron, but his behavior um, was uh, a threat to the foundation. I agree with you. I agree with you. However, once all of that was kind of, um, it was, it was, it seemed to have been ironed out and money was being raised and nobody cared. Everything that had happened in LA, the world heard about it. Nobody cared. The biggest financial windfall that they had had took place during all of this. When, when this woman was bombarding the world with everything. And I think it's really odd that she had no desire whatsoever to go to the police. Right. That's what the, that's what someone their, their first thought is. I'm going to go to the cops. That's the first thing you do if somebody wrongs you. Right. I mean, done. Make a phone call. Tell the cops what just happened. But your first response is I just want them off of the foundation. That seems to me to be a really odd request. Right. I'm sorry. That's not normal. Normal is I'm calling the cops. I'm filling out a report and I'm going to ruin your life. If you think that somebody attacked you, they call the cops, right? They don't, um, he did. Yeah, he used that word in a video. Um, it does sound very odd, Amy. It does. Uh, he is a public figure for his choice and he has come to terms with the fact that, he's pu that uh, public and private don't really exist. The question to me is the way the foundation did it and a lack of transparency. I think that that's a really legit point too. I don't see anybody yelling at you for that. I think you make um, two really excellent points. Um, but I think that one that we really are, are kind of missing the big picture on is that um, the way that he was treated would have been exactly how he would have been treated if everybody involved was still working for the Church of Scientology. It looks remarkably to me like this is business as usual. Write us a really long letter telling us how bad you feel and why you should be uh, allowed back and beg your way back in. I mean, it's the same policy that they would have had you do, out ethics or whatever they call it, right? If you had been with the church. it's That's creepy to me. And here's the good news, people. The good news is when we stop talking about this in a couple of days, right? or a week or whatever, um, the Aftermath Foundation, I think, is going to do... Um, well, you know what? I'm going to be really honest, uh, Laura. Now you can just sort of shit in your hat. So now I can understand both sides without adoring anyone. Well, I'll tell you what. I adore Aaron. 
right? And now I think you're rude. Up until this point, I thought you were just kind of making your point. But you have a problem with the fact that I like the guy? Beat it. For real. Uh, with all due respect, I don't need you, you know? Um, I'll let you make your point. I'm not going to let you, I'm not going to let you just be disrespectful. And to be really honest with you, that's just disrespectful. I, I adore the guy, you know, I adore the guy. I do. And I'll tell you why I do. Cause he's a stand up cat. Cause the dude sat down with me and told me things that he definitely didn't want to tell me, but you see, I asked him, right? I asked him very specific questions. And I said to the guy, you know, we're uh, at that point, I had been on his channel about five or six times. And every time I had been on uh, his channel, we had done about double the, the uh, views of whatever he'd been doing. So we had had a little successful uh, thing going with one another. However, uh, there are things that I won't talk to a dude if I think that he's involved in, right? But I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get to that person. I'm going to talk to them one-on-one. -on -one. I'm going to figure out who they are. And I'm going to make a decision based on a lot of things that I learned in ways that other people didn't. And you can judge me for that. But I, I learned the things that I learned in a, in a different way and in a different environment. But I'll tell you something that I'm pretty freaking uh, solid with is that um, I, don't, I don't think I get the wool pulled over my eyes a lot. You know what I'm saying? I spent the first half of my life as a, as a con man. And I, I know the real when I, when I run into it. And there are three or four people that I have met in this movement that are so damn real, it's frightening. For real. And you know what? Start getting a few followers in this game and, and start to meet the people who are, uh, who are out doing this and how they're doing it. And you'll get a real appreciation for what YouTube is, right? I, didn't, I thought I knew what YouTube was because I had made a thousand videos, but you don't know what YouTube is until you start getting a couple of numbers. And you start getting a few views and you start getting a few subscribers. And then you start to see how people are. And I'll tell you something. Uh, Aaron has just been absolutely solid in everything that he said he's going to do. He has been. What do you guys. Uh, so one of the questions is, what don't we know? Um, what I would say you don't know is this. Uh, there are. Do I think I could spot a, uh, a rapist? I think I can spot a liar. Jennifer. Um, I can spot a liar. I, 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 no, I don't think I can spot uh, a rapist. If I did, I would probably be in prison because I'd be hunting them for a living. Keep that real. If I, could, if I could spot people that went out and did that, I think I'd probably be in a lot of trouble. That's real talk. I'd put a team together and we'd go out and hunt them because those kind of people should be off the streets for real, right? Get them watched, do whatever. No, I don't think I could spot, but I can definitely spot a bullshitter, pardon me. I'm good at that. And, uh, and when I sit down face to face with somebody, um, I usually walk away with a feeling that, um, uh, is solid or not. And, um, and I've had many opportunities now to sit down. Um, so I, at this point, I, uh, I, well, here's the thing. Um, I'll, I'll be honest. It's a different thing with the ones that go after kids. I swear to God, they walk in the front door and every single inmate in the entire place knows. And I'm not being funny. They, and, and it's probably because of the fear in their eyes. It's because they realize that they're walking into a death sentence. So when they walk in the front door, they got to look on them. That inside prison, it's completely different. Yeah, you can spot them inside prison because they know, right? They, they, look, like, uh, they look like the wildebeest at the watering hole, all right, at all times. They got this look on their face like, um, you know. They're, uh, they're, they're terrified. And, and you know what? It's, I can't imagine the fear. It's, it's got to be a horrific, horrific place to, uh, to live. But they put themselves in that position. And, um, and I'm, not a huge, um, I'm not a huge fan of those people. I don't have a lot of uh, sympathy for them. It's just kind of the way it is. JC uh, Orbano, thank you so much. And I'll do that. I promise you I'll do that. He is the amount of support... Um, I had thought in the beginning about like uh, CCing him on uh, on emails. He would have killed me, man. Honestly, he would have never talked to me again if I had e if I had CC'd him on all the emails. Um, <clears throat> I'm not. Uh, yeah, I've been pretty clear on that word. I'm not a fan. I'm absolutely not a fan. And on that, we are in uh, we are in complete agreement. I'm not. I'm not a fan. I, I'd like to see that word removed from the English language. That's, that's my stance on that. Um, 
You don't have to agree with me. And I'm not mad at anybody that doesn't agree with me. I'm not mad at anybody that doesn't agree with me on any of these points, man. You want to make points, you can make points. I am a, I am a convict. I mean, I really am. There, I'd love to get away from that. But I, de I definitely went to prison. And when you go in there and, and someone says, hey, man, I got your back, what it means is when you go to the shower, he makes sure no one's going to go in there and hurt you while you're washing your hair. It means something completely different. And I'll be honest, you walk out of there different. I hate showering. <laughs> to this day, I hate it. It's, it's, it's one of those things that I have to do every day that I can't stand doing. I don't know that I'll ever get over it because you spend 13 years not liking it. It is, a, it is something that you have to do in there that, I mean, removing all your clothing in prison is not something that's, a, you know, you would like to be fully clothed and maybe have a weapon nearby. That, that's kind of the way that you feel a little bit more comfortable. So when you're in there in a the shower, that guy sitting in the chair on the other side of that, that cloth, if he decides to go up and get his Walkman real quick, or his radio, right? So when someone says, hey, I got your back, it literally means, bro, I got your back. Go take your shower, wash your hair. No one is going to come in there. I'll stab them before that happens. That's what you're telling your friend. And when he goes to take a shower, trust and believe you're going to have boots on, right? Sitting in a chair, letting everybody know you got that dude's back. So maybe it's different for me. I don't know. I, I, I don't have a problem listening to, uh, to any debate about why the Aftermath Foundation may have, uh, may have made a good decision or a bad decision. I think that in the long run, with any of these foundations, these things aren't freaking churches and they're not, and they're not holier than thou um, you know, corporations. They're not. What they are are people that try to help and people are flawed. Every single last freaking one of them. And if you've ever stepped foot on this channel, then you've got a pretty good idea of the fact that none of us are built correctly. Right? None of us are. We're all um, a little busted. Right? So we, uh, we do what we do and we try to get through it. And again, you know, I, I, can, I could sit here for the next 38 minutes and I could probably do a damn good argument for why the board made a good decision. I, I mean, I understand that. Right? Um, and I don't have a real issue with it. I understand where anyone is coming that says why they think that the board made a good decision. I just think that, um, you know, these are your, these are your four best friends and, and, you know, very, very obviously, right. Very, very obviously right from jump street. Uh, the, this board was almost a, uh, a puppet board, right? What this board did was sign off on all the financial crap that went out to cover your ankle six right to cover your six when you run an organization like this any financial disbursements get signed off on by a large group of people so that when these weirdos come out screaming about receipts and receipts and who's ripping off who and all that none of that happened and the board makes sure that that goes smooth but all the work wasn't being done by those three individuals that were throwing rocks that's not who built that the aftermath foundation you can go look at clips that rabbit pulled up that show clips of film of them saying yeah i you know, really didn't have anything to do with building it. That was all AA run. And then, of course, that that gets forgotten really quickly and they change their mind when the time comes to get rid of them. I believe the board tends to be exactly what you just said it is, I am. Um, I'll tell you something else. Thank you, Casual Domestic Violence. Appreciate you. Um, I'll tell you something else. Uh, if, you have a, if you have a foundation... And what you're trying to do is help people get out of a, a cult. I think this is just one guy's damned opinion. And uh, by the way, I'm not bucking for the uh, job. I'm a uh, convicted bank robber. But they should have people on the board who are not former Scientologists. Right? That would make a lot of sense. To me, that would make a tremendous amount of sense. Then you bring a little bit of the secular world or whatever you want to call it into this. So that stuff that is a lot less culty. Right, Because in the business world, every single day, somebody leaves a company and everybody hates each other over it and nobody says that. Now, you can go over afterwards and make videos to do whatever you want to do, but it, it could have been a very easy break. It could have been a very, if you really want the guy gone, it's a very, very easy break. Johnny, you know what to do. Do what you do. You're, besides, you know what? I'm only going to be doing this for about another uh, few minutes. I made the mistake this evening of not putting on the... Um, the fan before I did this and I just got a and installed by myself for the record I got a uh, smart thermostat 
and it controls the uh, temperature in the house. You never touch it. The idea is it saves you some money. It's a, it, and, and it's all, you know, it's supposed to make my life easier. But what it's actually doing is raising the temperature at night and cooling it during the day, which is absolutely ridiculous because I want it freezing at night when I sleep. But I got to work on that. So um, it would dilute the train sales reactions. Uh I always thought robbing banks was asking for trouble. The FBI doesn't give up. Well, Mary, um, or May, I'm sorry. Uh, they don't give up. They don't. Um, the truth of the matter is, though, most bank robbers get told on. Bank robbers don't get caught robbing banks. They get told on. And uh, you don't get caught in the act. That only happens in movies. It takes a very short period of time to go into a bank and rob it and leave. Right? If you get caught robbing a bank, like in the act of robbing a bank, you're so stupid that you should have to do life in prison. Right? You didn't do anything beforehand. You didn't do any work. You didn't case it. You didn't do anything smart. I mean, there's the anomalies or whatever, but if you get something far enough, anyway, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna do, do a dissertation on how to rob a bank, but it is, uh, it's a terrible way to make money. Um, what you see in the movies doesn't happen. You're not walking out of a bank with $500,000, right? That's in a group, in a good bank robbery, you might walk out with 18,000. Uh, An anomaly, you might get 20, 25, whatever. Um, but it's not, it's not what it is in the movies, man. You're, unless you want to go to the vault and do that. That was not something I ever did. Thanks, not. I appreciate your support always. And you know what? Snot and I don't always, uh, don't always agree. You know what I mean? We disagree on things, but I love snot. You know what I mean? I don't have to agree with any of you. I really don't. I just demand that you guys be, uh, be civil, right? This is a civil boat. I'm not huge on judgment. You can say that the actions that the guy did were stupid. Right? Don't say my friend is stupid. I'm not going to... That one I, I won't do as well with, right? Dog Day Afternoon is more like the reality, Amy. That's, that's more like the reality. I mean, to, the truth of the matter is, um, being robbed is traumatic, May. I, I, I'm telling you right now. And um, I've said this on the boat before. I, I didn't... I, I always, every single time, I never once said there was never a threat of a weapon. I never said I had a gun. I never said I was going to hurt anybody. I went the exact opposite way. I said, I don't have a gun. I don't have a weapon, but I want you to give me the top drawer and the bottom drawer, and I want you to do it right now. And they were going to. That regardless of whether or not I had a weapon, they were going to do it. And I knew if I told them I had a weapon, it greatly enhances the prison sentence. Right? If you do a little research on that beforehand, it is a much different prison sentence. If you tell the person that you got a bomb or you got a gun or you got something like that, that, that puts you in prison for a completely different crime. Now you're a terrorist. They, they treat that differently. So, um, but it's, listen very carefully, right? It's the dumbest way in the entire world to make a dollar. Even if you're a criminal, it's a stupid way to make money, right? Um, no, they never put dye packs in the bags. You can identify a dye pack very, very easily, Deeming. If you pick up the money and bend it, dye packs are not like the movies. They look just like that. It's like a little disc that sits inside the faces of the money. So they take a stack of, banded money and they cut the faces out and they put a little disc in it like this and that disc is what explodes it's not like the movies where they put those huge cans in at least i've never seen one of those anyway everything i saw you, when you would pick up the money and you would go to bend it there's actually a scene in um one of the bank robbery movies that's pretty pretty real they show the guy going for the die pack like he's going through all the money you don't say fill the bag because they're going to put money in there you say put it on the counter so you can go through it yourself Right, you want to touch all the bills because if it doesn't bend, it doesn't spend is the uh, the joke, right? So if it doesn't spend, you drop it right on the floor and you leave the die pack in the building, the tracer bill, your microwave on the front seat. I won't tell you the rest of it because then you might go rob a bank, and that would be a really bad decision. I promise you, it's a terrible way to make money. It's a stupid way to make money. I promise you, there there are no nobody uh, retires and gets away with it. I mean, there might be somebody out there that got away with one bank or whatever, but. It doesn't happen, man. He's right. Some, eventually, somebody's going to tell on you. That's just how it goes down. Um, Aaron is, vul is vulnerable and honest to his audience. The board seems more out of touch. Aaron is very down to earth. I stand with him. I'll be honest. Thank you, Susan. Uh, I'll be really honest. I, I see the board as robotic. I see them uh, and I'll be. it, it looks to me, I don't want to say things like... Um, Yes, therapist Mel, I did, and I will be responding. Thank you. Um, I did get that. I do get. I do get the emails, and believe it or not, people, I do respond to them. You will. You will be getting a, uh, a response. Uh, you were watching down the rabbit hole. I had a feeling you were. Kenya, thank you. 
It's good to see you here. I'm very happy that the uh, the the quality of the um, the picture is better. We uh, the quality of the audio ought to be better. Everything is going through a different um, setup. Um, everything is every single part of this has been upgraded except the lighting. The lighting has remained the same. Seventh, good to see you, man. Always a pleasure. Uh, so for those of you who are just coming over, here's my deal. Like I said before, I don't care if you criticize Aaron, right? Or if you criticize his actions, I don't. I, don't, I have no problem at all with anybody that says they were justified in getting rid of him. If that's your stance, that's your stance. I got mad respect for anybody that can put that in such a way that isn't going to offend me, right? That's fine. You have you have a right to that. Is he still going to have a show? Oh my God, yeah, Jennifer. He's going to have the biggest show. You watch where he is. Anybody want to put any cash on where he is in six months? I'm taking uh, side bets. Send me an email. I'm not playing. I got, wait till you see what's about to happen to AA, Ron. You have no idea. I'm telling you. Good stuff is going to happen. I wish I could, I would love to tell you all about it. I can't. But there, there are big things, big, big things in uh, in his future. Uh Ironically, the Aftermath Foundation caused a situation for themselves they thought Aaron would. There's some irony in that, right? There is some very, very serious uh, irony in that. You came over from down the rabbit hole. Spike, good to see you. Glad that you're here. I dig down the rabbit hole. Um, I subbed there, uh, I don't know, I think probably the day that I did the um, I'm Angry video. Uh I got um, somebody linked me to one of the uh, the videos that um, that she does. She's fantastic. I love I love her content. I love her content. I really do. If you haven't if you haven't subbed over there, you'll dig it. I'm I'm telling you, and I'm and I'm saying that honestly. I don't I don't shove uh, channels down people's throats. You'll dig this. The content is super cool. Valerie one hundred two says my first super chat. Just wanted to say the connection the connections made here are so important. Um, also, great big love for you. Oh, well, thank you so much, Valerie. I have mad, mad love for you. I'm so glad you're here. I really am. And I'm glad that the connection thing is catching on. I'm glad that people realize that um, it's the, uh, it really is kind of the backbone of, uh, of what keeps all of us sane, right? If you're not connecting, then you're going to connect with something else. And it could be blow, it could be, you know, booze, it could be whatever, right? But, um, Yes, on chipmunk speed. <laughs> Mad respect for Aaron's rabbit is great. Sub there a few months ago already. Good. Mary Huffman, good to see you. And anybody that loves uh, feet, just loves it when Mary Huffman does that, right? Okay? Because you get the, uh, the the foot shot up there. She uh, got, Now, I couldn't recognize that before the, uh, the high def, but now I realize that that's feet. <laughs> it really, I'm telling you people, it has changed. Um, so obviously you know that my brother Johnny Scoville is a, uh, a much bigger internet uh, guy than I am. And Johnny does, um, he has 100 and, I don't know, he's got a silver play button, he's got a lot of people. And he uploads a ton of stuff. And he does videos, so he does less live feeds than I do. I only, I only go live. Um, and today, uh, Johnny did a video, it was like 10 or 15 minutes long. It wasn't the hot ball video, it was a video that we did after the fact. And he uploaded it in like six minutes. And I'm telling you people, before to upload a video, one of the reasons I don't do any videos, one of the reasons, and I mean, granted, live is what I'd rather do. But in a perfect world, I got three one-hour videos in the can so that if I can't do a video, something comes up, I can play a one-hour video that I've already done. And we started doing that back when Mark was around. It would take us like seven hours to put up a one-hour video. And it's just not worth the uh, effort. Lydia Von Stretchclaw, good to see you. Glad that you're here. It was, I, I'm, I'm, the purpose of today's video, people, was to give you my reaction to, to what happened over there. And it's sad that it had to happen. That's really, really sad that this had to happen. But we live in the world that if you're going to be a public figure, that the, the individual that thought we were going to attack them earlier is right. If you're a public figure, guess what? There's no such thing as the private half of your public life. Right? There's not. I, to, I think I told the story yesterday. I went to buy, I went to buy uh, jeans. I will not buy new jeans. I won't. I can't stand the way they feel, right? I want jeans that are beat to hell. And once I wear out the ones that I have that are beat to hell, like I will hunt thrift stores, secondhand shops, like I dig that. But I walk into a place and as soon as I do, I run into somebody that knows uh, me and my brother and I'm like, oh, 
oh, they're going to they're gonna take a picture of me in a second hand store hunting down second hand clothing and they'll have a, you know, a field day. And, and that's a stupid thought. It's a stupid thought. But once you, once you cross this threshold, guess what? If you're outside your house, right? And you, I mean, I can go to McDonald's and the person behind the counter just absolutely messes up. And I go, you know what? This was the worst service I've ever got. I, they might just be somebody that watches the life book. For real, right? And they're going to write and say, boy, Tommy was the biggest jerk in real life you've ever met. So since I started this stuff, like I do live a different life in public. And I don't mean I fake it, but I certainly am more conscious to never be a jerk, right? And I think that if you're going to be doing a foundation or you're going to be doing anything, that you're going to have to start being that cat, right? You have to ground, you have to err on the side of, I don't want to. I don't want to find myself into a into a uh, a situation I don't like. Right? I don't want to find myself into a situation that's going to make the boat look bad. You know, God forbid that I would have to because this thing would outlive me. The really great thing about the boat is if I screwed it up, we'd put somebody else in the chair because the boat is is way bigger than than me sitting here. It's all of the people that show up here and support one another. It's like Valerie said earlier. It's the connections that all of the people here. Right? If you're brand new to the boat, people come here. They go to the Facebook. Don't tell me you hate Facebook. I hate Facebook more than you do. But we have a Life Boot uh, group page over there. And the whole pr purpose of that is just so that you don't have to put your email address. You don't have to put anything in here. And you can actually connect with people and start to build relationships. And you will see different things happen. And they are beautiful things. That's, that's an absolute fact. Thank you, Tampa B. And I'm feeling good. I'm so much happier with a uh, with knowing people can see me. Um, I knew, you know, it's, I wasn't mad at anybody. I understand. I wouldn't want to watch something that, uh, that, that the quality's bad in. Now I have 2020 <laughs> vision for some reason. Miracles do happen. Bruce, it is. It's a miracle. If you knew, if you knew what, uh, what it took to get a uh, high speed here, it really is a miracle. Um, on the bright side, this is the highest high speed that we can get in this part of the world. Um, I think it might even be to the point of redundancy. Um, I could be doing this uh, at the same time as uh, Johnny and you wouldn't uh, notice any kind of a difference. N uh, Nicola E says, I don't have a channel or anything, but I'm glad we didn't have phones in our pockets when I was 20. I want to tell you something. I now know that my brother is not watching in the other room because he literally would have said, good Lord, or yelled something like that when you said that. Because we've had this conversation so many times. I have... I have told the world everything about my past, right? Everything about my past. But if, uh, if you could watch it on a video, I don't know how many people would be here. I'm just keeping it real. I don't know how many people would be here. I want to see Squirrel looking pretty. You're not the first person. No one really, since the high speed happened, everybody. You're right, grounded in truth. Ultimately, the truth always wins. It just takes a long time sometimes, and that's a fact. Looks like I will be dropping Denver Stevo. He was posting not nice things on Rabbit's channel. Is that true? Well, then let's tell the world that, shall we? Because that's not cool. That's not cool at all. I, I, I really dig Rabbit's channel. Um, by the way, just, I love you guys. I really do. I love every one of you. But every once in a while, and by every once in a while, I mean once a day. Someone will leave a video, a comment on a video of mine that they didn't watch, <laughs> right? They'll leave a comment on a video they didn't watch. But what they'll do is they'll read the, they'll read what the, the thumbnail is and they will think they know what I am going to say for the next hour. And then they will leave a comment about why I'm wrong and I will be like, I don't know what the heck you're talking about, right? If, if you just want to yell, do it on an email then. Then you don't look stupid for the whole world. Only I'll be the one that knows you're, uh, you know, you're playing with a half a deck. But those comments, man, they, anyway. I did not see one nice thing on Rabbit's channel. Not a single one. Wow, well, that's not nice. That's what I said. Cats, bats, and flowers. I don't know if you were here in the beginning, but that's exactly what I said. I said, I'm a 53-year-old man. The things that happened to Aaron have happened to me four or five times in my life where I just put myself into a situation with somebody that didn't handle booze well. I didn't handle booze well. So we had two people that were probably not, you know, at their best. And I have found myself in situations where scenes broke out that looked bad. 
with my right hand to the Lord, I have never struck a woman in my life and I never will, ever. But you know what? You can still find yourself in situations that if someone walks in the door on, look bad, right? Just look bad. Um, it's, it's just... You know what? There are going to be people that take shots. There are going to be people that show up here shortly and take shots. Hopefully our, uh, our wrenches do the, do the job. I don't have a problem with people who agree with the Aftermath Foundation board. That's your opinion, man. Everybody has that right. I'm not mad at, at ideas. I don't get mad at ideas. If you're taking personal shots at my friends, I'm not letting anybody do that on my platform. It's not a place for it. I like my friend. Why would I do that? Right? Doesn't make sense. I, I called out the behavior I thought was, was out of line. I don't like the C word. Bums me out. That, that whole section of that is something he just needs to, 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 in my opinion, in my opinion, it's something that he needs to maybe just put that away and never use it again. But um, yay on the biopsy. The only important thing of the day. You hear that? The only important thing of the day. I love Aaron. The rest of this is all trivia stuff in the, in the, in the scheme of things. But we did get a clean biopsy today. And that is, right? I mean, that's... That's the real world right there, people, right? That's one of our own that we do not have to worry about having cancer. How's that for a big ass dose of perspective? Huh? How is that for a dose of perspective? Inappropriate heifers. I cannot uh, judge anyone for bad behavior. I am inappropriate. That's the spirit. Um, I really am a person that does not have the ability to, um, uh, I don't have the ability to, uh, to, to be cast in stones at anybody for anything. Uh, no, I'm not a big fan of the word, Juliana. I'm not, uh, I'm not a cursor. I'm sorry that offends you. I spent a lot of time in prison. You hear the F word a lot. I got my fit. I, uh, I don't really need to hear any more of it, but it's, uh, you're welcome to build a channel and let people say whatever they want on it, hon. I promise no one will get mad. Four years in the Al Anon this month. Good for you. Um, you know what? That's really a, uh, um, <laughs> Deviant Outcast. That's a great comment. Um, I'm starting from the beginning, coming directly in from Rabbit's interview. Boy, we sure do some weird stuff to deal with trauma. I fight myself like no one's business. I don't even know it 50% of the time. And you know what? There's your comment. There's your comment. I'm glad, Juliana. The last thing in the world I would want to do is offend anybody. And I mean that. I got no desire to offend anybody here. Uh, um, you know, it's... Uh, but I, uh, I learned this, okay? I learned in my life that if I'm talking to you and I'm dropping F-bombs, I've lost control of my life. And it's, I'm not saying it's like this for anybody else on planet Earth, but because of how I got sober, one of the things that I did in the very beginning was said, I'm not gonna do that anymore. I'm not gonna sound like every person in this building, right? That was my goal. I was gonna sound educated. I wasn't gonna sound like every other convict in that building. It was my goal. So that's how I started my sobriety. So that was so attached and so hardwired to a part of getting sober that when I feel myself starting to, to drop, and I, the occasional shit's not gonna kill anybody, but, but if I start dropping F-bombs or whatever, I'm, I'm in a bad place. Like my head's not where it should be. And that's just like plain and simple. Um, so for me, it's another canary in the coal mine and I talk about this a lot. Oh, snot. I'm sorry. Thoughts and prayers for snot's uh, fox. Renal disease uh, prognosis. That's not good. Therapist me, I am not mad at you. Uh, you know, people do this a lot when they call me. Like, they'll go, they'll say something. They'll just be like, man, it was the shittiest day in the world. Oh, I'm so sorry, Captain. I'm so sorry. Look, if you're not in the comment section, I don't care what you're doing. Right? You live your life any way you want. But imagine this, just for, for, if you can play the game with me for one second, just imagine somebody that is damn near puritanical, right? Somebody that just can't hear the word F. For them, it's the worst thing in the world. And I've met those people, I promise you. They will walk away from a channel if they read an F in the, in the chat or they hear somebody say it from the front of the room. If I ran off somebody for saying an F-bomb, 
that needed to get sober, it's going to mess with my sleep. I'm telling you right now. And my best bet is to just not say it. It's not that tough a thing for me. It really isn't. So, and, and, and there are people, I catch a lot of crap for this. Believe it or not, you would not believe the amount of crap I catch for not cursing. <laughs> Why do people do ones? People do ones because around here, um, we like to say, uh, for instance, today, somebody had a, um, we've been praying for an individual who was having a biopsy and the biopsy came back clean. So for some people, that one means they're thanking the universe. For some, it means they're thanking God. For some, it means they might do a spell later or whatever. And whatever makes you happy. But it's our way of saying to the entire place, we're here for you. Oh, look at that. SPTV Tattoo Warrior, one of my friend and teacher people, named me the irrationally helpful kid whisperer. I wore that badge proudly for 20 years until I retired. And now I do it on YouTube. The Irrationally Helpful Kid Whisperer. That's one of the most beautiful titles that anybody in history has ever been called. How happy are you at that? Yes, Tim Smith says, to be fair with the rabbit in moderation, she's not used to that kind of traffic. It was to be expected. And you know what, people? With that kind of traffic, God bless, I got great mods and I got a lot of them. But when you're up to that speed and it's really hard, I think they did a, a, a pretty decent job. Um, <laughs> Jean Marie said, Jen Marie says, is anyone else finding themselves unsubscribing from favorite channels? You know what, people? It's how you vote. It's how you vote. Um, and that's just the way it is, you know? Yeah, there are people who are going to lose. There's definitely going to be some hemorrhaging of some subs. Uh, the thing, there was a comment earlier that said, I really loved what Aaron said about you. I felt I felt weird reading it. Thank you for the, uh, for the super chat. I appreciate that. I felt really, really blessed by what Aaron said. It was one of the kindest things that anybody's ever said about me. It's, it's hard for me to take um, that. And I'm working on it. I swear to God, I'm getting better at it. But I spent 13 years having everybody in the world hate you. Right. And it's a very strange thing to come out and then do what I do because the the adoration and there's a lot of it. You guys are great. I get the nicest emails in the whole world. Right. But it's the hardest part of what I do. Um, Rabbit had eighty seven hundred viewers. Yeah, that's a people for for, for the best mods on planet Earth. That is a really tough uh, uphill battle. Right. That's a tough uphill battle. Thank you, inappropriate heifer. And you know what? I believe that. I swear to God, I believe that. And it's just, um, it was hard listening to him say that. And I don't know why that is. I I'm, I cherish the hell out of that. I really do. Because his friendship is is really one of the most important friendships in my life. That's a true story. I uh, I care di very deeply about uh, AA Run. Um, so that's that's huge for me. But it was, uh, it was just, it was a, uh, I'm not good at it. <laughs> I'm not good at it. Today I had to resubscribe to Emily D. Baker. I like Emily D. Baker. Um, YouTube is going bonkers. Renee, that's what he did. That's what he did. He took their power away from them. That is what he did. And I'll tell you right now, people, this is good advice across the board. I promise you it is, right? If we don't put things in closets, right, then we don't have to worry about them. If, if the skeletons are out, I, I really have no problem whatsoever uh, sharing the things that I've done from my past. Thank you. Yes, my, uh, my brother really is a, uh, a very good person. Uh, and that's the truth. Uh, Johnny really is. The, the amount of uh, good that Johnny does behind the scenes that he doesn't uh, that he doesn't get credit for he is um, as my father said of all of the uh, of all of the kids I created he definitely has the biggest of the hearts and uh, Johnny's a great dude he is um, he is one of the, the kindest people in the entire world uh, and stuck by me through everything I did through all those prison sentences and all of that crap he uh, never once um, you know, never once made me feel like a loser or never once made me feel like I couldn't come back from it or that I had done, you know, something. I mean, he was he was the first to tell me I was an idiot. You know what I mean? Like, you know, I remember when I when he found out what I was arrested for the, the bank robbery things. And he was just like, dude, I mean, we have a running joke between the two of us where the punchline is you made an error. Right. And uh, that was the first thing he said to me. He was like, oh, bro, you made an error. 
You know, you finally started journaling today. You hear this? Second, truly important thing today. The rest of it, right? Honestly. Oh my goodness. I had a sailor mouth. Uh, I had a sailor mouth at the height of my addiction. Now if I cuss, I think about it later. Um, and I uh, feel bad because I feel people looking up to me now. It's funny, others cuss and I'm fine. But if I do it, I can, yeah, I can see the disappointment on their face. I get this. My God, I get this. Um, I really do. I get this, right? Um, and you know what, Susan? Email me because there's no reason you should have bought that twice. Email me and we'll get one of those things kicked back to you. But it's a great comment, right? It is a great comment. Um, when you, and then, and I think that that's something that has weighed heavily on me. Um, yes, uh, uh, Yadira, I understand. This is, this is, these are trying times. I have, this is the reason that I made the first video where I was like, this is my guy. Because I couldn't come out and talk about, I, Aaron had confided in me. I sure as hell came out. I couldn't come out and, and talk about that. But I wanted to get on the record instantly before people started talking that this is my guy, right? Um, if there are any questions, this is my guy, right? Thank you, Suzanne. I appreciate you. I really do. Um, I feel bad. But thank you so much. I appreciate it. And it is really, I mean, it's it's a killer point. When you begin, you begin to really feel, uh, you do feel it. I do. You know, there's never been a time in my life. I shouldn't say that. There's There's been plenty of times in my life where people looked up to me, but not for any reason that was a good one. You know what I mean? Like I was being looked up to for everything that you do not want your kid to be. And, you know, so now it's just really a different thing. Thank you. Thank you, man. That means a lot. And, and you know what? I wish I wish that everybody had a had a brother like mine. I know that there are people. You know, my I have a friend whose brother's in prison, and um, he told me about it. He's, I mean, it's painful to have a family member in prison. And I uh, I wrote to his brother in hopes of maybe starting the dialogue because I really care about this dude, and I don't want his brother to fail when he uh, when he gets out. But he uh, he never wrote back. And I, if you have a family member in prison, write to me, and I'll write to them. I, I will do that. If there's someone that wants to get sober, like for real, and they want to do that, I will write to them and I will give them a, a heads up of what they're going to be looking at because when you walk out of prison, it really is um, a very different thing. Renee, thank you very much because I think this is a point. Thousand percent. You go to the police if you're assaulted. You don't ask for somebody to be removed from a board. It's a very, very strange thing. It's also a very strange thing that she's not called me. Right? She hasn't called anybody else. She hasn't reached out to anyone and said, do me a favor and put my story up. I'd, I'll tell a story. I swear to God I will. I'll, and I love Aaron, but I'll, I'd put that girl on. I'd like to interview her. I really would. There's plenty of questions I'd like to ask that girl. For real. I've, I've been down that road. Um, what about a former inmate as of a year ago in rehab? Um... You have a former inmate. Yeah, absolutely. Write to me. I would be more than happy to uh, to talk to that person. Yeah, um, because they're right there now. If uh, if they're a former inmate a year ago and they're in rehab, they're on their last chance, man. Like they're not the. If they put you in rehab, you won the lottery, right? Because what they were supposed to do is put you back in prison. So I uh, absolutely. Um, yeah, absolutely. Suzanne, reach out to me, please. Yep. Thank you, Vixen. It's a kind thing. Thank you. I appreciate that because I don't do it. And you know what? You want to hear something crazy? About 50% of you will never hit the subscribe button. Half of my views come from non-subscribers. So how's this? I don't ever do this. Hit the subscribe button, right? Do me a favor. If you're not a subscriber of the Lifeboat, hit, the, hit it. You're going to find this is a pretty decent crew. Look at this. Valerie, thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Um, yeah, Mitch is off my list too, I'll be honest with you. Um, unless he does something dramatic. I mean, I am a very forgiving cat. I really am. I'm a very forgiving cat. And I hate the Church of Scientology. So my gut would tell me that all of these people can, um, you know, I'll, I'll, yeah. 
all of these people can stop the, uh, the, the damage. Seventh Son says, can we get prayers for Steve Molesky? He is in need of a new heart after he recovered from his uh, knee replacement. People, if you're new to the boat, um, Steve's one of us, man. Steve really is one of us. He's, uh, he's the real deal. And uh, we want him to get a new heart and be around for a long time. Karen Lee, glad you just subscribed. It's an honor to have you. Thank you. Really appreciate that. Vaguely misunderstood. I've never met anybody that was only vaguely misunderstood. You're doing something right. Okay, people. I'm going to be back tomorrow morning in high definition. <laughs> First thing in the morning. This is a high definition pussycat in a basket. Are you ready? Look at that, huh? Oh, on demand. Well played, squirrel. Are you ready for your close-up? That is a good-looking pussycat. All righty, people. We will see you on the next Patterson, New Jersey. I had a, uh, my sister's first uh, boyfriend was from Patterson, New Jersey. I could tell you stories. All righty, everybody. We'll see you on the next one. God bless.